square one kitchen. Hello everyone, today we are making sourdough bread. Now these are the percentages of how much you want of each. Using the percentages you can make as much or as little bread as you like by scaling up or down. You may need to adjust cooking times if you make extra big or extra small loaves. Compared to most sourdough recipes, this one has relatively few steps. It does take 18 hours from start to finish, but most of that is resting time. In our house, we do three main steps. We normally feed the starter around lunchtime. Step two, normally this part comes a little bit after dinner. We'd make the sourdough and it, it'll be nice and bubbly. Step three, the next day at breakfast, bake the bread for breakfast most often. That's quite lovely. You just need to mix t it together with a mixer, with a dough all by hand as well. You don't need to knead it. Let the dough rest while you are eating dinner or watch a show. This lets the gluten develop. Making bread involves resting it a lot, and I mean a lot. You're gonna wanna feed your starter again. There are two ways to feed your starter for next time. If you're making bread often, just replace the same amount you took out. For example, if you took out 100 grams of starter, replace it with 50 grams of water and 50 grams of flour. If you feel like your starter is getting out of control, put aside 150 grams of starter and mix it with 150 grams of water and 150 grams of flour. You can use whatever is left over to make crackers or pizza dough or cinnamon swirls. In that half an hour, you should have gone from a lumpy mess to a stringy dough. When you fold it, stretch it out and fold it back to create a nice long loop. When you're folding it, it's if you're a parent, it's kind of like folding a nappy or something like if you're folding a blanket as well. Just keep going until it feels like it's getting tight and a little bit smooth on the outside. We leave it overnight so while we are sleeping, it doubles in size. You don't want flour service again because it will still be sticky. Remember how you let rest? It should have expanded in that time. See how the dough has developed some nice strands overnight. Stretch it and fold it like you did before. It'll put some nice bubbles in your bread, which is definitely what you want. Make it into a nice little ball. Flip it over and now our bowl here, I personally think it's really pretty because it has all those lines. You want to flip it upside down to get the smooth part in there. Anyways, I just think it's really pretty. You can use any bowl you like. Now when you're um, cutting it, you just want to cut it enough so it has room to expand, but it will expand how you want it to expand. That's kind of the point of cutting it. You can use a fancy bread lame like my dad that has here, or you can use a sharp or a serrated knife. So you can get really artsy with that. You can make it look really pretty and really fancy. Turn the heat down to 450. Bring it back out and take the top off and put it back in. Turn the heat down to 425 and let it bake some more. And then at this point, all the hungry little housemates are going to be coming down asking for some bread. And you're going to tell them, no, you have to let it sit before you cut it. My dad is very particular about letting it rest so the steam escapes through the crust and not through the crumbs where you cut it. I can't taste the difference. Nice, gorgeous piece of bread. If you've never made bread before, don't be scared of it. Bon appetit. Please like and subscribe.